In this presentation, we're going to see how to update selling prices for Microsoft Dynamics NAV. First, we'll update the item card unit price, and then we'll use the sales price worksheet, either based on item card unit price or based on sales prices. So, we go to sales and marketing, inventory and pricing. Before we do any update, let's look at our items. So we'll update the unit price for a couple of items. And to do that, we go to Adjust Cost and Prices, select the item card and the unit price to adjust. Let's say we want to increase it by 5%, and we're going to round it with two decimals. So we'll do it for a selection of items and we go back to the item list and the unit price has been increased by 5%. Now let's go to the sales price worksheet and look at the update based on item card unit price. So the sales price worksheet will update not the unit price, but the sales prices. We don't have any so far. And we're going to work on this item, the, the first. So on the sales price worksheet, you've got two icons. The first one is based on the item record, suggest item price. And the second suggests sales price is based on the sales price record. Let's use the first one. We're going to update the customer price group, the large customer price group. So 0 0.9 is a factor and just for item 1000. Okay, here we need to click create new price because we don't have any price existing. So the new price is based on the item pr on the item unit price. Let's go and see what happened. So based on the 4200 multiplied by 0 0.9, we have a unit price for large customers that has been created. Now, if you increase your unit price as we did before, so our unit price, base unit price, has been increased and to keep in sync our large customer price, we're going to do again 90% 0 0.9 for large customer. We don't need to tick create new price because we already have it. So by doing so, we maintain the large customer price to be 90%. And here we implement it. So before we, if we don't implement it, it's not, it, it doesn't exist. So let's see, unit price hasn't changed. And our large customer is still 90% of the unit price. Now let's use other options. So you can have buy for all customer or by customer. So let's do the price for a special pricing for one customer. So customer 30,000 will have a price of 0 0.85, 85 85% of the normal price.
So a new sales price has been created based on the item unit price. Now, instead of working with the item unit price, we're going to work with existing sales prices. That's why we have two icons and we're going to use a second one. So let's go back before we do that to the existing sales prices. We have three prices for large, small customers and for particular customer. And we've done, done that for a couple of items. So let's use a suggest sales prices. Going to select for the small customer price group, for the large customer price group, we, we increase by 10% of on a selection of items, and the system suggests. Let's do it also for the small customer price group. So we have an existing price and a new price. We can implement for everything or for just a selection. Let's implement it just for the small customers. Yes, we want to delete what we've done. And let's implement now for the remaining ones. So you can implement all at once or by just a selection. Now let's look at how to use dates. So far we haven't put any starting and ending dates. So if you you have probably have a choice either to fully use dates or not to use them at all. So far we haven't used them. So if we want to start it's much better to start using date. It's much better to be consistent and put dates all the time. So that's our price on the 1st of January 2013. We have three prices for the special prices for that item. Let's create new prices for 2014. We start with the large customers. We're going to put the date at the 1st of January 2014 increase by 10% and here we'll be consistent we'll put the same filter we want to copy the large customer price that exists okay and and we're going to put a filter to copy the prices of January 2013. So we have a new price suggested. We'll do it for the small customers as well. So we keep the same filter from what we want to copy and where we want to copy. And to finish we do that also for the customer 30,000. In the same way, we put the starting date as that's the price we want to have. It's going to be effective on January 1st, 2014. And we copy the price of that customer. Okay, so three new, new prices have been suggested. We're going to accept. Let's go and see what happened. On the sales prices, we have keep the history about the price in 2013 and the new price in 2014. So depending on the order date, the right price will be selected. And we can create price in advance, let's say 
we are just in before 2015 and we want to create already the new prices so we did it for customer 30,000 let's do that on the two other ones again we want to to take it from the large customer the starting date is going to be the new the new price date and we want would just want to copy the price in 2014 we don't want to do anything with the pro with the older price last one the small customer price group so it's very important to keep to to put the same filters small and small okay so we have increased the price of 2014 to 2015 let's double check so this way we have the full history so the advantage you have full history the downsize is maybe more records to see in, uh, at Match Business Solution, we've done a few enhancements to make it easier. So on the um, suggest sales prices, we have added a few filters so that you can select only the customers that belongs to a particular salesperson or depending on the dimension, the first two dimensions. And we have added a last price modification by keeping when we update a sales price we kept when it was done when it was done who did it and what was the last price so that's a way to prevent any uh, double increase by putting a filter on the last price increase